Good morning, everyone. It's JJ at microefutures.com. I hope everyone's having a good weekend. Today, I'm going to do a, a couple of videos about shorting markets. Um, this is just going to be a general video about um, what we need to focus on when we want to short sell a market. And it really doesn't matter what time frame. There's some concepts that a lot of people just don't really seem to even think about. And having been in the industry for 30 years now, um, I'm going to take you back in time a little bit. And so just indulge me. And I'm going to tell you a story about how we used to short. See, back in the day, in the 90s, we would short often because we knew that there would be a seller because markets were designed for people to exit their positions. They would get cheap stock, and as the price went higher, they would sell that stock into the retail buying, right, causing dilution and therefore liquidation. So there's a saying called selling alongside. So the key to all of this is if you are a short seller, what do you need for your short to work? You need to be, you need a seller. You need a seller out there with some size, which will be the supply that pushes price down. If you don't have a seller or a group of sellers in your market, it's going to be very, very hard for price to go lower. Okay, This is one of the most simplest concepts that nobody ever thinks about. See, we used to do something called selling alongside. Okay, Now, how this would work is we'd be sitting at the trade desk and one of our buddies from another firm would call out on a trade desk. He'd call us, right? And they'd, he'd go, hey, you know what? They're selling out this guy. He's got 2 million shares of this stock and he's leveraged against it. That's the story. But the call, the call would be, hey, A, B, C, D, there's a sellout for 2 million that's going to hit the tape. Click, right? So he's giving you a heads up. Now, this is Canada, not many rules. So before you guys all go freaking out about manipulation and everything, just stuff it in a sack for a second. Listen to the story. So 2 million shares is going to hit the tape. We'd all go short five, 10,000 shares of the stock, knowing that that 2 million share sell order is going to hit that market and push the price down and we can cover, right? So that night, you know, you sell 5,000 shares, you make five grand, 2,500 bucks, whatever it is, 10 grand, you're buying drinks at the bar that night. Very simple. You repay the favor when you have a sellout come to your desk, right? So what that's called is selling alongside of supply. To short sell a market, you have to be able to identify if supply is going to be in the market. Because remember grade three, supply and demand, right? It's really not that complex. Markets go up when they look for supply, they go down when they're looking for demand or buyers, right? So what we need to be aware of right, is when that supply has been locked up on whatever time frame you're trading. Now, if you look at this chart in front of you, this is a daily chart of the ES, you'll notice after a market moves higher, it goes sideways. It moves higher, it goes sideways. Really only in this instance, off of this three-day move, did it come down the very next day back to where it started. Most of these moves they go up, they go sideways, and then they move down. The reason is because it's a market, folks. People have product for sale. So whether we're selling rugs or spices or, you know, hair club for men, whatever you're selling, in this instance, we're selling futures contracts, you have supply, which is being distributed at higher prices. You have supply, which is being distributed at higher prices. When buyers stop coming in at higher prices, 
the people who own the supply at lower prices, the wholesalers, sell at cheaper price. It's like putting a TV on sale if there's no buyers, right? Then what happens is the shorts come in and start bidding the market, price stabilizes, they cut supply so they can sell at higher prices. It's business, right? None of these moves, none of this stuff is random. None of this stuff, this is just commerce, okay? So you gotta be able to look at a market and see if there's supply. Now on this move down that we had preceding this craziness on Friday, the market was above 40.54 for you know a bunch of days, and this is a distribution move of the product here and here. So the market starts to sell down. We look underneath our 200 day moving average and come back up over it. This is a clue. Now, in my next video, I'm gonna show you how you can look at these things on a market profile chart, even on a candle chart, and when a market looks below a level and fails to get lower, it's telling you you don't have enough supply to get down here, right? So there's no use in shorting a market when it goes under a level and comes back up over it, right? That means that they've cleaned out the sellers at that level and the market is going to move higher or rotate higher as it looks for supply, right? Just as you go to the store to buy something that's in a limited edition, it sells out, people buy it and flip it on eBay for double the price. It's the same thing, right? You guys just have to think about this in a simple way. Then you can apply your technical analysis to it, but it'll keep you from stubbornly shorting when there is no one around to sell to push the price down, right? Got to use a little practical common sense in this trading, right? It's a business. You got to think like business people. None of this is random, right? You put $2 billion on the table, trust me, nothing is random, okay? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Next video, I'll show you how to use market profile and balance levels so you can stay on the right side of the trade for you longer term traders and also for shorter term traders to stop getting jammed at the bottom of markets. There's some very, very quick ways to figure out when the selling has shut off, okay? I'm JJ, come hang out with us at microwefutures.com. We'll teach you how to stay on the right side of these things. Have a great, great weekend. Bye for now.